Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. To start this special episode, we're going to look at the updates that are coming with the 1.1.1 update. To do that, we are on a Skylon website, which is the designer of Luminar Neo, and we are in a section called What's New. If you want to check the full list of the updates, you're more than welcome to visit the website and see it for yourself. Now let's have a look at the update. The Luminar Neo 1.1.1 update, duplicate layers and bug fixes. As the name suggests, this update is heavily focusing on fixing some of the bugs and making the life for us photographers easier. So let's go through it. Luminar Neo keeps getting better. In the new Luminar Neo 1.1.1 update, you can easily create and duplicate layer for even more creativity. Just use the shortcut D. Plus, Luminar Neo now speak better Swedish. Most importantly, as I suggest earlier, Skylum caught more than 20 bugs that could lead to unexpected results. Since this update is big on fixing the mistakes, let's go through the list. Now we're looking at the Mac version. So what we have here. So you can now browser the presets without experiencing memory leaks. You can display correct radial masking coordinates when crop tool is applied. You can also apply brush strokes to your layer image with the brushing mask without seeing parts of the underlying image appear. You can also use the crop tool without affecting the previously copy-pasted inverted mask on your image. Also, you can open masking model in the edits tab and click revert to original without experience crashes. You can use the B hotkey twice without crashing on Mac and the latest version of the system. You can place the sun center when using the sunray tool without losing the brush. Press enter while specifying the brush size value in the refinement brush without collapsing the tool. You can also revert the edits in the catalog tab so the changes are not visible in an edit mode. You can also double click the image on the second layer and see it correctly reset without stretching over the underlying layer. You can now also smoothly use the X hotkey for masking brush and erase tool. Finally, you can rename an external disk without display issues with the locate folder. Now that was for the Mac. And now let's have a look at the Windows versions. So what we have here, browse presets without experiencing memory leaks. So that's the same. Display correct radial masking coordinates when the crop tool is applied. That's the same too. Apply brush strokes to a layer with the masking brush without seeing parts of the underlying image. So that's the same. Use the crop tool without affecting a previously copy paste inverted mask on your image. Also same for a Mac. Smoothly export multiple images with a fixed resize value. So that's fixed, that's good. When exporting, replace a photo in the original folder in the catalog without experiencing crashes. That's also new for Windows. Apply the erase tool and be sure all edits are recorded in the database, even after opening the catalog without collapsing the erase tool. That's also different for Windows. Also different for Windows is choose image adjustments in the menu when in an empty album without crashing. Also new for Windows is load image previews, even if the previews were manually deleted from the cage. And then manually input the brush size without crashing. And finally, open the edit tab after switching tabs and scroll up smoothly. So that's about it. Those are the updates for Luminar Neo 1.1.1 update. And now we are ready to jump into the application where I'm going to show you how to make sure that you have the latest version and if not, how to install it. Now, before we're going to go into the Luminar Neo, I wanted to give you a quick reminder about our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. It just got updated with the recent release and recent updates, and it now includes over 966 new elements to power up your Luminar Neo tools. You can get extra high definition skies, 
overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, LUTs, and presets. This all will help you to transform your images with just a few seconds. So make sure you check it out. We still have it on the update deal and it's available on our website, cleverphotographer.com. If you want to find out more about it, make sure you click on the link in the description of this video. So now it's time to show you how to make sure that you have the most recent version of Luminar Neo and if not, how to install it. For most of you, when you're going to open the application, you will be prompt with a request to update the application. So if that's the case, just follow the steps and you will be fine there. If you haven't been prompt with the update, what you need to do is to open the application and then go to the top of your toolbar. There is a Luminar Neo, click on that and there should be option called check for updates. Click on that, prompt you with this update window. Here, as you can see, it says that the new version of Luminar Neo is available and the Luminar Neo 1.1.1 is now available and we have an older version and would we like to download it? Of course we would like, so we click on install update. So the download started and as you can see, it's over four gigabytes big. So give it a time and then we're gonna continue. Once it's finished downloading, it's gonna extract the update and then it's gonna be ready for the installation. With the extraction finished, now we are ready to install it. So just click on the install and relaunch. Now it's gonna go back and forward within the application. It will install it and then bring us back into the catalog module in the application. Once we are back in the catalog module, let's just make sure that we are on the recent version. So we go back to our Luminar Neo on the top of our toolbar, click on it and click on about Luminar Neo. So that will prompt us with another window where we see the Luminar Neo update one and the version 1.1.1. So now we're good to go and start to use the latest update and features in Luminar Neo. As I mentioned earlier, and we went through the list, this update was mostly focusing on fixing the bugs. And if you experience any of them in your case, you will be happy to see them fixed. However, really for us who maybe didn't know about any of them, there are two major updates coming with this update. And that's the possibility of duplicating the layers and using the X hotkey to switch when working with the brush. So let's have a look at it. We are on this image, which I was actually using earlier, recording today's episode of how to add wet glass effect to your images. And you can see it on my channel. And it's gonna be handy as I will be able to explain you the power of duplicating the layers. So I have this lady here. I am in the edit module and I wanna add a new layer on the top of it. So I'm gonna go into the layers panel. I will click on the plus sign. And in my layers panel, I have this wet glass overlay. So I click on that and apply to the image. We will not do the full edit. I basically just have the layer here. I will quickly jump into the layer properties, increase the opacity and change the blend mode into the screen. Now that will bring the subject back as you can see it on the image. I can bring the opacity down a little bit. However, the image is really bright this way. I'm just gonna turn it around, make it a little bigger so you can see it a little bit better. As you can see, the image is really bright this way. So how would I add a little bit of darkness? How would I make it darker? Well, it's really simple. I would just select the layer, click on it, and then hit D on my keyboard. So that duplicates the layer. It keeps the same position, the same transformation, and it also keeps the same setting on our layer properties, which is really cool. So to darken it, all I need to do is to adjust the blend mode there. So I click on the blend mode drop down box and change it to something like multiply or darken. Let's see darken, which is too dark and multiply. Multiply helps a little bit. Of course, we need to bring the opacity down somewhere around 20. However, I can very quickly duplicate the layer, keep the same setting, makes a little adjustments and continue working without importing the layer again, trying to find the same position and really having difficulty to do that at all. So this is a big improvement and we're really excited about it. While we're here, what if I don't want this part of the image that dark? While we're here, let's also cover the second update and that's the use of the X hotkey. So let me show you what I mean with it. So I have the layer selected and I like that it makes it darker on some parts, but the other parts, I would like to keep them bright. So for this, we're gonna use masking. So while we have our layer selected, we are in the layer properties, we can click on masking and in the masking, we're gonna click on brush. Now, when we were doing brushing up till now, we had to come back to our masking tool here and keep changing between the paint and erase, which of course is a time consuming, especially when you're working on a big project. 
Now, with the new update, you can simply use the X on your keyboard and just move between the paint and erase. So you can really erase some parts very quickly. So let's say we do something like this. And then let's say that we paint by mistake over her face. You can just quickly hit X on your keyboard, which will bring you to the paint, and you can paint the effect back to your image. So of course, again, this update focusing heavily on fixing the bugs. However, these two little updates with being able to duplicate the layers and being able to switch the paint and erase tool in your brushes are really handy and I hope you're gonna enjoy them. And now it's time to get your gift. If you want to get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar gift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.